Now welcome to the art section of our evening, Painting with Jarek Ross, where we talk pretentious cobblers for about 10 minutes <laughs> in a specially pretentious, tendentious style. In any case, let's have one of my favourite painters, and I'm still having to, going to have to find something more than the bed and zoom for this. Here's Sir John Lavery, and go away, cookies. <laughs> Sir John Lavery, portrait painter, was born the 20th of March, 1856, in Belfast, son of Henry Lavery, a poor wine and spirit merchant who embarked in Liverpool on the immigrant Clipper Pomonia. Now, I believe that painters sell their work by looking at their painting. I could read read all this stuff out about his background, and I will give you the, the link so you can read about him if you like. But... Here is Sir John Lavery's, one of his most famous paintings. This is Michael Collins on his deathbed with the ironic, or possibly not, depends how you wish to interpret this painting, Love of Ireland, in the background. And a number of the traditional icons of, of Ireland on the top. You've got um, a tricolour flag, of course, and you've got a crucifix. And you've got, of course, that giant red pillow, which looks like sort of Michael Collins is going to have a sofa in the afterlife, it would appear. Um, no, no offence, men. But on one hand, it's a kind of iconic and fairly sort of muted depiction of a figure who's, who looms large in Irish history. You can't de discuss modern Irish history without discussing Michael Collins. He will enter the room somewhere along the line and somewhere close behind him, the ghost of Devalier will walk in and there will usually be an argument about the two of them that will start up five minutes later. <laughs> but on the other hand, is it telling you that this is the cost of the love of Ireland that, and that perhaps there are other ways to love Ireland? Is this the cost of patriotism and is it a valid cost Collins was a fan of Lavery in real life and of Lady Lavery, his um, wife. Readers of a certain age who have some Irish background or travelled in Ireland or have Irish relatives will recognise this painting of Lady Lavery as Catalina Houlihan because it was decorated notes for many years and wasn't all the banknotes. It was stuck all over them. Every time you picked up a note, you'd find this staring at you. I have notes left over from when I was a kid traveling to see relatives where this, in a slightly different form, it's more monochrome, will stare back out at you. Now, let me see if I can find some other works by Lavery. As I say, painters, to me, the best way to look at their work, rather than me lecturing about their life history, which I could do at great length and read out that in entire document in an extremely boring way is to let you look at their artwork. Here's the Red Rose, which is another famous thing. Again, it's Lady Lavery. He had an obsession for painting his own wife. This is, of course, one of those poster sites where you can order these in sort of, um, if you are so... Um, kind to. I'm not suggesting anyone do. I'm only using it because it can be used as a gallery. King George V, accompanied by Queen Mary at the opening of the modern Foreign and Sergeant Gallery. You will notice the looseness of paint where it's just slapped all over the canvas in that almost impressionistic style and that huge level of contrast. In fact, let me go back to the beginning a bit. The jockey's dressing room. Again, nice, lively contrast, loose use of paint. But if you stand back, and I've seen most of these paintings in real life, they look full of motion and you almost feel like you're in the scene. Lavery is, deserves a reputation as a great painter. The golf course, Dort Berwick. This looks, unfortunately, really boring on a screen, this, this particular painting. It's not in real life if you stand next to it. But unfortunately, it does indicate how paintings can look very flat and dead on a screen. Sun Courtney, Summer on the River of the Wharf. Again, this painting is best seen in real life where it looks a lot more alive. You get the image of a 
people on a nice outing, throw a moment frozen in time from a particular period. Japanese Switzerland. And here you can see Lavery was going for a particular mannered Japanese look that was popular in artwork of the time where people were borrowing from Japanese art and borrowing particular poses and sort of settings. Bathing in the Lido at Venice. Again, a moment frozen in time from a world that's gone. And that's the, the joy of painting. And it's also the melancholy that these moments are gone and won't come back. Oh, Limorti Signi and above over. Obviously, it's from Swan Lake. Again, a frozen moment. And of course, it has to be an artificial moment because uh, there's no way, of course, you could absolutely capture Anna Pavlova exactly that moment without using photos and preparatory studies. So it shows both the artificial of painting and the ability to capture a, a moment in time. Mrs. Lavery sketching, as I say, John Lavery had an obsession with painting the misses. Evelyn Farquhar, famous, well, moderately famous upper class woman of a day. You can look her up if you're so inclined, of course. <laughs> Society painters are going to paint who? Members of upper class society. Mrs. Guthrie, someone's trying for extreme impressionism here, it would seem. And boating on the Thames, again, moments of a frozen time. Um, it's only a brief presentation, but I thought we'd do another of Jarek do does his pretentious painting talks to see if anyone enjoys the artist. You never know. Someone might find an artist that they that they like that they've never heard of. 